Say hi, guys. Hi. Say hi, Hannah. Hi. Hi, Elliot. Say hi. Generously supported your lunch tickets. A couple weeks ago, we have a group of producers called the Large Flock Operators. And they, for the first time, I think it's the first time, I'm, I'm not even really sure, but they put on a, an, a sheep expo and demonstration day at the home of John and Edie Steele. And John and Edie Steele are my mentors, and they're also where I got quite a few sheep. Very good day, a really good turnout. Probably 250 people showed up. First part of the day, well, the first part of the morning and the first part of the afternoon, uh, was all demonstrations on in their handling facility. They have a barn that they commit fully to a handling system and it's a pretty cool system. And the system I did not get good footage because I was talking outside to all the people because I love my sheep people. So on a day like that, yes, I should be learning and I should be um, talking to exhibitors. And I don't because I'm really, really chatty. I know that's hard to believe. I did, however, follow John along as he toured his farm. So I want you guys to, to have a look at his farm. He, I believe, I hope he says it in here. I can't remember what I actually taped, but um, I think they're at about 2,500 ewes, breeding ewes. Uh, he has an elite flock, which is all his replacements kind of come out of that elite flock, and he keeps Genovis records on that flock. And then his others uh, lamb all outside on pasture, and he explains all this in on his tour, so I'm going to let him do that. I do apologize for the wind. I don't have the fancy microphone fuzzy thing um, to make sound better uh, with no wind so but they did have a megaphone so I'm hoping the sound is okay um, it's a bit long but it's really interesting they are really good friends with a with a manufacturer they get a lot of their stuff done by reconfiguring old equipment and it saves a lot of money if you just are a little bit handy and can do these things. Uh, we pasture lamb, everything, all our ewe lambs lamb unassisted out of pasture unless they're scanned triplet. Our elite flock lambs inside in April and they go through the jugs so we can keep the parentage and to record it. And then everything that's uh, been scanned triplet or quad or quint or more from the uh, May lambing also goes through the greenhouses. But all the singles and twins, they stay outside lamb unassisted at pasture. The ewe lambs, um, are out right now. They will come in the 1st of December to be mated um, and kept in for six weeks, two weeks before tupping and then the month of mating. Then they'll go outside and they won't come in. Some of them that don't make the elite flock will never maybe come back inside in their life but the best ones will the following fall for their mating. So you'll see how we use uh, the greenhouse structures uh, as a part of a a grazing system or a grazing flock. Okay, should we move on? So this feedlot, um, we built it in 2001, I think. We used, used hog flooring um, and used hog pads. We had Klusman Farm equipment build the feeders. It has the capacity for, uh, it depends on the weight and age of the lambs. The stocking density is 25 pounds per square foot. So these lambs sitting in front of us are 75 pounds. They were just too small to go to the eat. So these are my tail enders from the April lambing. This pen could probably hold about 85 to 90 of this weight lamb um, and 75 of the 100 pounders. So these lambs have been in for just over five weeks. They were, they were born inside in April in that cold weather. They went out to pasture. Um, they were weaned and came in on 15th of July. In here, we don't feed any any forages. If we need fiber, we buy a, like a fiber pellet. And so those lambs, the top bunch on this floor, well, not these ones, but the ones, we can transition and, and feed them 5% less fiber every day. So we go from 
use on full feed. Uh, we have a tumble mixer, it's not processed grain, it's all whole grains. Bunch of different bins out there. So we can buy a cheap deal of wheat or barley, whole corn, whatever. We also use this greenhouse, uh, this, this building as a Forster Technic milk machines because it's on slats, we pressure wash it off and the, the pen over there and this one here, uh, we put the milk machines here and that's what the shelf is for, for the header tank and uh, we use it for the artificially raising the lambs. So what we do is the rest of the ram lambs that were born in, um, in May are out basically being backgrounded and they can stay out indefinitely and then I maybe bring in 200 every two weeks, put them on this floor, get them from basically a forage ration to full grain, move them to the lower floor and I normally know if you bring them in at 80, 85 pounds, three weeks later they'll be going out at 105. Yeah, a, a sort of a poor man's TMR from Precision Chop. So that's your mixing. So when you go down the road you can drive to the field and be mixing it and then when you get back to the field you just wind it out. About four or five years ago, Del Monte opened a plant in Oshawa that was peeling fruit for fruit trays. And they needed us somewhere to, to dispose of the fruit. Currently, uh, we're taking about 100 tons a week of it, but we can do that year round. A tractor trailer unit comes in, tips out every day. It's a video spread, and that's all it is. But we put in some corn silage, some fruit, the mineral again, layer it in, and go out to the field with a second tractor and it's our TMF, TMR feeder wagon. If we want to dispose of fruit on pasture, we can just swing that shroud to the side and throw it out just like manure, and they pick it up off the ground in the summer. In the winter, we tend to put it in a row so they can find it in the snow easier. The other really interesting thing about the, the, the fruit is the water content of it. With a dry hay or a baleage system, it is also a source of water for us. We're not in a heavy snow area here. If we take out four tons of fruit for a thousand ewes, we're basically taking uh, four kilos or four liters of liquid. Well, it's 90, it's 92%. So they've got three three liters of, um, of water to drink, eat. It's like popsicles in the winter. Another thing was we just walked by, it might be interesting to see. We farm about 800 acres, spread over 16 different properties within the township and we're liable to take sheep to any one of them. I don't have a gooseneck, I don't have a fancy truck, but I have tractors and I have bale wagon. And uh, it'll hold about 100, 110 weaned lambs, or 60 or 80 ewes, and we've still got a hay wagon. We're not investing in, a, in a, an expensive uh, gooseneck. So this year we went and bought a couple of these. Uh, we modified it with a, with a, a door here and uh, we can fill it up from the tote bag and this holds a ton of mineral and this then is located we can move it wherever we want to be mixing our feed it could be out by the bunk silos out there or by the fruit pile and we just measure some buckets like a, a 10 litre bucket or a 15 litre bucket with a mud line um, open the slide drops out the mineral throw it on the pile load it with the loader put it in the feeder just make life easy. So let's start with the greenhouses. This greenhouse is 20 something years old, 26 years old. Um, it sort of fell down about four or five years ago because the post had rotted, uh, okay, in an ice storm. And so we put these cement block walls in. I'm quite happy with them. There's a little bit of work for the plastic every few years, but they're cheap. And I like cheap because then my money stays in my pocket. A couple of things just to think about in barn design. Put your water bowls in, recessed into the wall if you can. So when you're cleaning out with the, with, with the tractor, you don't have to get off and fork the manure from around the water bowls. Mm. These little water bowls He's were designed ready. from a copy that I saw in Quebec. Other things here, we've got a central feed passage. Uh, we've had these quite a few years now. And the important thing, if you're gonna have a feed passage with adjustable feed rails, adjust it. This bar here was down there last night and it took me about 10 minutes just with an impact driver, uh, a cordless and a, and a half inch wrench, just to undo a bolt and slide it up so these lambs could access feed. These lambs had been in the feedlot for about three weeks until we got their EPDs back from Genovis. Of course, we're on performance recording with everything and they've been out for about a week now. Uh, they were out on, on grass again, uh, but I brought them in here for convenience to show you a bunch of different things at, at once. We've got two different groups of sheep in here. These are the maternal composites. So these are exactly the same genetics as the ewes that we're working in the demonstration. We've got 
seven different family lines. Um, and these lambs are just about 110 days old. Uh, they're nearly all triplets and uh, certainly twins, no singles. I guess I'll give you a little bit of a sales pitch. Um, we've been selling genetics for a number of years now, and unfortunately we can't always keep everyone happy by having enough new lambs. Um, so this year we've decided to start selling some of these rams. So I'm going to be selling a limited number of these. I normally keep about 12 or 15 myself, but there's going to be 12 or 15 in here this year for some people who I've already spoken to. These are my, I've just switched. We used to have a Texel flock. Uh, we still have some Texel use. But we decided to do an experiment and we've used Suffolk and Texel this last year. So we, some parts of the world call them Suffolk or Shartex. And... Um, these lambs were born the same time. They were mainly reared as twins and singles because they were Texel mothers. At the 100-day weight, on average, they were, these were only about three pounds heavier than these. It would be interesting to know how they're, they're carcassing and they're muscling. These will be um, going back out to pasture once you guys have done. Lambing, and we had a drop rate of 2.77, and we weaned uh, 2.54, 2.55 just out on in the field. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel bad. So this little machine, you can put bales of baleage or dry hay in there and it unwinds it out the back. Same idea as that machine, so you can just drive through. The other machine over there is a manure spreader. Again, that we, with John Klusman, uh, converted. It has the double beaters at the back still. It's, it's look, a manure spreader for the lifted up chassis to put the wheels underneath so it goes down the feed passage. Um, we layer the feed in, uh, if, when we did uh, accelerated lambing it would be corn silage and haylage and distillers and mineral and it has a canopy at the back and then a splitter underneath but the feed goes back to the back, hits the paddles, mixes it pretty well and then drops to the floor in two rows. Um, what it allows us to do also, we only really have sheep in here between November and, and the spring, is we can feed one day and everything they can reach they eat that day. And then the next morning, we come up on what they can't reach, we kick to them with our feet or whatever, and the next night, and that night we go back with a snow scoop, so we can actually feed every other day with that machine rather than every day. Half of the large flock operators and uh, all our vendors that were here today and everybody that participated. We want to say a very great thanks to John and Edie for their hospitality. And for having us, I'm going to hand this to Edie, see John doesn't want it. <laughs> Edie, thank you very, very much. I've learned so much from John and Edie, so I always love going back and seeing them or seeing them at functions because they live about three and a half hours away from me, so I don't see them barely at all. So it was really nice to see them, nice to see friends and peers. It was a great day. I will be back vlogging a little more in the sheep barn. We're in the, we're going to be in a harvest soon here. I'm lambing right now. Uh, I will be making it my mission this fall to uh, get, get you some better content, what you want to see. I hope you enjoy this one and uh, stay tuned. And I got another one. I got another one in the can ready to come up. So enjoy. I hope everyone's had a good back to school week. Take care.